welcome to Meeple University's How to Play Cavern Tavern. In Cavern Tavern, players play the role of bartenders in Nasty the Dwarf's underground bar. Players will attempt to earn victory points by taking orders and then mixing drinks with the various ingredients in the game, as well as by completing chores and other tasks. The game plays over 10 rounds over the course of one night, and the player with the most victory points wins. To set up the game, place the main board in the middle of the table, and place the timing board set to round one, which is 10 p.m., on to the side of the board. Place all of the ingredient cards in separate piles off to the side, and then shuffle all of the other decks. You will not be using this deck, as this is used for solo play, and this deck, as well as this board and the associated tokens, are used in the Secret Chamber expansion, which also comes with the main version of the game. And we'll talk about that later in the video. Each player takes a player board, a reference card, four dice, a meeple, and a timing token in his or her colour. Take the matching jug and place it on the zero on the scoring track, as this is your scoring marker. Add all other players' jugs. Take these three track markers and place them on the top space of the corresponding tracks. Then take the character cards, shuffle them, and deal one face up to each player. Return any leftover cards to the box. And take the secret task cards, hand one face down to each player, and return the leftover ones of those to the box. Choose a first player who takes the first player marker and then give the white die to the player on that player's right. The white die will move from player to player as the game goes on, but in the first round it will be with whoever is last in the turn order. To complete setup, each player rolls his or her four coloured dice, not the white dice, for starting ingredients. Then the player takes one ingredient per card for each die from the corresponding seller places. So for this starting roll, the player could take these four ingredient cards. Players place their ingredient cards face up on their player board. Even though they're all cards with a common back, the ingredients the player holds is always public knowledge. Finally, draw six order cards into these mess hall spaces. Once that is done, you are ready to play. To start each round, players roll their dice, including the white die if they have it, and then place it in the available dice slot. Hey, who took the real character card? It's me! Look, it's the same! <laughs> hey, give me the real one. No. Real one. Aww. Hmm. A round is played in a series of turns, beginning with the player with the first player marker, and moving clockwise around the circle until all players have run out of dice. On a player's turn, a player must place dice into one of the dice slots on the board, placing either one die matching the number, or multiple dice matching the number of the slot. That gives the player the benefit of that slot. Additionally, there are three other types of actions that a player may take on his or her turn, either before or after placing dice. A player may take an order from the mess hall. The player may complete that order by returning the corresponding ingredients to the main supply in exchange for the victory points on the card. Or if a player has gained an item card during the game, the player may play an item card as an action. A player may take as many actions as he or she wishes on a turn provided exactly one dice placement is made, and if it is a player's first action of a new round and the player has no open order card, the player's first action must be to take an order from the mess hall. To make a dice placement, players must place one or more dice into a dice slot with the sum of those dice matching the number shown on the slots, 
or in the case of these ones where the dice have question mark icons, placing that number of dice regardless of their number. So to use this space here, a player could place a 3. To use this space here, a player could place a 6, or could stack two 3's together and place them both at once. To use any of these slots with numbers between 7 and 18, players must place at least two dice, but may place as many as required to make up the number. Using this slot would require a player to place two dice of any type. In these two sections of the board, each dice slot is represented by a grey square, which is why that this one here, even though two dice are there, they are still occupying a single slot. The numbers on these grey squares represent player count, and so more of these spaces will be open in games with more players. These slots here only have space for a single die, or set of dice, in all player counts, which is why it doesn't matter too much if you lay the dice out flat like so. Once a dice slot has been occupied, another player cannot go there for the rest of this round, but the dice will come off at the end of the round. Once you fill a dice slot, immediately take the benefit of that space. And I'll now go through what all the benefits for these spaces are. By placing dice on one of the six cellar slots, immediately take an ingredient card for one of the two ingredients shown in that corresponding space. If there are no cards remaining of the ingredient that you want, you take no benefit. When placing dice on a kitchen space, claim the benefits shown at the top of that space, which will be an ingredient card, some victory points, and based on this icon, move one space down the kitchen track. This is found on your player board. Additionally, if you play a seven, you may take the first player marker for the next round. If you play a 15, you can trade one ingredient card from your hand with a separate ingredient card from the main supply. And if you play a 17, you can steal an ingredient card from another player. In both of these cases, you cannot gain a magic potion. All of these extra effects are optional, so you can decline them if you wish. The chore board works in much the same way. When you place dice, you will gain the ingredient shown the points shown, and move one space down the chore track on your player board. In addition, for a 16 you can force a trade of one ingredient with another player, and for an 18 you can choose an additional ingredient to take from the main supply. Unlike the kitchen track, in these cases you can take a magic potion. As you move down the kitchen and chore tracks, you will unlock certain benefits the lower down you get. Once you've reached this space, you will gain an additional two points every time you complete the corresponding chore or kitchen item on these areas of the main board. When you get down to the next highlighted level on the track, you'll gain three additional victory points instead of two for every completed chore or kitchen item. Additionally, when placing dice, on a chore or a kitchen item, you may modify one of those dice up or down by one number in value. This can only be done when placing dice on the corresponding type of action slot. When doing this, you cannot wrap a 1 into a 6, but you can turn a 6 into a 7. When you get to the bottom of the track, you gain 4 additional victory points instead of 3, and you can adjust a die up or down by two instead of one. There are three different action spaces in the Wizards Workshop. This first one requires one die of any number, and it allows you to discard any one order card from the mess hall, draw three new order cards, look at them, and choose the one that you want, placing the other two on the bottom of the order stack. This action will give you greater flexibility to get the orders that you want, but only if you get them in the middle of a round. Remember that at the start of a round, if you do not have an order, 
your first action must be to take an order, which means you cannot take this action before taking an order in that situation. This action space allows you to place two dice to gain an item. Draw the top three item cards from the deck, look through them, choose the one you want, and shuffle the other two back into the pack. Items are kept secret from other players, you may hold up to three at any point in time, and you may play them at any point on your turn, even immediately after taking them. Using this action space costs you three dice to take an item card exactly as before, taking three and taking the one of your choice, as well as a magic potion ingredient. A magic potion serves as a wild card ingredient and you can use it to fulfill any other ingredient in any order. The final action space is Nasty the Dwarf's office. Place one die of any number to move yourself one space up your nasty track and move another player of your choice one space down their nasty track. I'll talk more about the nasty track later in the video. The next type of action in the game is to take an order from the mess hall. And remember that this is mandatory at the start of a round if you have no open order, but is otherwise optional. To take an order from the mess hall, choose the order that you want, place it face up in this slot on your player board. You can only have one open order at any given time. Then place your meeple on the empty space and take your timing disc and place it on the current round. This keeps track of when you took the order because orders are worth fewer points the longer it takes you to complete them. When other players then wish to take an order, they choose from the remaining cards. These cards are not replenished until the order is completed. If a player does not like the options on the board, the player may draw blindly from the top of the pack when taking an order. If a player does this, a player must discard one of the cards from the mess hall in order to provide a space for the meeple, and then draw blind from the top and place it on his or her player board. Once you have taken an order, you have committed to completing it. You cannot discard that order. To complete an order, a player returns one card for each of the corresponding ingredients on that order to the main supply. A player may return a magic potion in place of any one other ingredient. Next, Check how long it has taken to complete that order to determine the number of victory points scored. If the order was completed in the same round that it was taken, score the maximum number of victory points shown at the top of the card. If the order was completed after the order was taken, count the number of rounds that it has taken to complete the order and score the victory points from the corresponding oval on the side of the card. In this case, it is one round late so, score 10 points. I'll talk about this red oval later. Additionally, if the order card has a kitchen or a chores icon on it, move one space down the corresponding track when completing the order. Then, flip the completed order over. You need to keep track of the orders that you've completed as they come into play with these secret task cards. Take back your timing marker, take back your meeple from the board, and fill the now empty space with a new order. You may take another order from the board immediately if you wish, but remember that at the start of the next round, you will be forced to take a new order. The round ends once all players have placed all of their dice on the board, or in some rare instances, if a player is unable to place his or her remaining dice. Once this happens, proceed to the end of round phase. Advance the round marker one space. Any player who has an open order moves one space down his or her nasty track. Next, check for forgotten orders. You'll see that right now, Green's order is three rounds late. And if you consult the card, three rounds late is the red oval. So this order is considered forgotten. 
lose the number of victory points shown in that oval, this will be the same as the large number of victory points at the top of the card, including going negative if necessary. Then discard that order card, you will draw a new one at the start of the round. Then all players gather up their dice and re-roll them for the next round. Give the white die to the player who is last on the victory point track, and in the event of a tie, the player who is last in the turn order. As the player moves down the nasty track, he or she will incur negative victory points that will be applied at the end of the game. Additionally, when entering one of these spaces with the mouth icon, the player draws a nasty says card from the top of the pack. This occurs only the first time a player enters this space, so if the player moves back up and then down again, no additional card would be drawn, and a player does not draw one of these cards if it happens in the final round of the game. Nasty says cards provide a penalty which will cost usually one or two actions to complete, either actions that you must take in order to complete it, or actions that you've already taken that you lose the benefit for. While you have one of these cards, you cannot visit the chores or the kitchen area on the main board until you have completed it, unless that card specifically requires you to do chores or work in the kitchen. The other resource at a character's disposal is their character card. Your character card has a power shown at the bottom of it, which can be used twice during the game. When you use it for the first time, flip the card from the green side to the red side, and when you use it for the second time, discard the card entirely. The power shown there will tell you at what point in the game you can play it. The game ends after 10 rounds have been played, and then proceed to final scoring. Firstly, each player loses points based on where they are on their nasty track. If a player still has an open Nasty Says card, the player loses 10 points for each. Next, if the player has no open orders, the player gains one victory point for each leftover ingredient. Note that if a player did still have an open order, the player would not lose any points for this order, but would not gain the bonus for ingredients. Finally, Flip the player's task card. In most cases, this will combo up a number of victory points based on the sorts of orders that were completed. In this one, it's four points for every nectar ingredient in a completed order. Count up the nectar, add the points, this would be an additional 12, to give a player's final score. Whoever has the highest score wins, and the tiebreakers in order are losing fewer points on your nasty track, or completing more total orders. If still tied, both players win. The Secret Chamber expansion module, which comes with the base game, utilises these components. The small board, the task cards, the dice modifier tokens, and all of these drink and Mrs. Nasty tokens. None of this is used until the fourth round of the game. So to set up the game, flip this over, and I suggest place a Mrs. Nasty token on the 11 o'clock slot so that it reminds you to put it into play. When the expansion does come into play, flip the little board over, draw task cards onto each of these three slots, and place a random token on each of the cards. The module is now ready to play. The secret chamber board brings two extra types of placement actions, the visit Mrs. Nasty action and the task action. To visit Mrs. Nasty, place one die of any number on a slot to take two dice modifier tokens. These may be spent at any time to raise or lower the value of one of your unplaced dice by one. As was the case for the kitchen and chore tracks, you cannot wrap around a 1 into a 6, 
but you can use these tokens to turn a 6 into a 7 or higher. While they're on the board, the three task cards work in much the same way as the action spaces on the main board. There are some with numbers between 1 and 6, which essentially replicate the cellar, letting you take one ingredient. Ones with numbers from 7 to 18 have either a chore or kitchen icon on them, and they count as chores or kitchens for all practical purposes in the game. Then there are some which mimic the wizard's workshop spaces, where you require dice of any type. To use one of these spaces, simply place the dice on the board of the matching number, and take the benefit shown at the top. In the case of the kitchen or chore items, this includes moving down the track as shown. You will also notice that on the kitchen and chore items, you will have more tangible benefits, more ingredients or more items than you get off the main board, but you get no victory points directly for doing this particular kitchen or chore item. At the end of the round, when you are retrieving dice, any task cards that you have completed come off the main board and into your personal supply, up to a maximum of three. If you have more than three, discard down to three at your choice. Take the tokens off the cards and place them next to your player board. These will be able to be spent or used later in the game. Then replenish any empty spaces on the task board. Add new tokens at random to the cards that have just been drawn. While these cards are in your possession, they become a permanent action space that only you may use. So on subsequent turns, you could come back, place another 14 on here, to again move down the kitchen track and claim all of these ingredients and benefits. These tokens can be used in a few different ways. If at any point you move down the nasty track and are to draw a nasty says card, you can instead discard three Mrs. Nasty tokens to avoid drawing the card. Alternatively, you can collect these through the game and you'll earn one victory point for each at the end of the game. For the tokens which depict a drink, this counts as a small order of just that drink. And at any time, you can return the corresponding ingredient, discard that token, and gain two victory points. Another small expansion module which was made available to backers of both Cavern Tavern and its follow-up, Rise to Nobility, on Kickstarter is the Events Deck. At the start of each round, flip a new card from the Events Deck and the text will depict an action which becomes either slightly cheaper or slightly more powerful during that round only. And that's how to play Cavern Tavern. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy playing and with thanks to Final Frontier Games. Please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to hear more from Maple University.